Okay, everybody, it's Dr. Phil, and you're on Phil in the Blanks. I'm not one for trying to make things overly dramatic, but I want to tell you today may be the most urgently relevant fill in the blanks that I think I have ever done since I launched this podcast. You're going to understand why in a minute, but I want you to watch this or listen to it, whether you're watching on YouTube or listening to it, wherever you listen to podcasts. I want every one of you, please, to contact five people you know particularly people that have kids, 12, 13, 14, college kids, whatever, and tell them they need to listen to this podcast, not because I'm so charming, fascinating, and entertaining, but because of the content that we're talking about today. I have got two of the most urgently relevant experts on today. And what we're talking about today are drugs and kids, and I intend to save some lives today because we have an epidemic going on right now that has to do with fentanyl, fentanyl laced into a variety of drugs and counterfeit pills that our kids are buying on social media. And this is something that you may think you are aware of. I thought I was aware of in terms of the scope and got a rude awakening in the last week to 10 days as I was preparing for a show on Dr. Phil as to the scope of what's going on here. And let me introduce my guest here so I can shut up and you can listen to people that know what the hell they're talking about in regard to this. Joining me today is Tim Mackey. He is a professor at UC San Diego in the Global Health Program and director of the Global Health and Data Policy Institute. He also is the CEO and co-founder of the health and technology company S3 Research. I'm going to tell you why that's really important here as we go along. He's working along social media outlets to take down drug dealers from the inside. And I'm talking about working with major, major players on the internet where these transactions are taking place. They want to stop it. He wants to stop it. He's working with them. It's easy to hate on these big media companies, but the truth is they don't want this happening at all. They just don't know how to stop it. But what Tim's doing is a big part of their efforts to do that. Also joining me is former director of the DEA Special Operations Unit, Derek Maltz. Now, he says he's been tracking the explosion of synthetic drugs since his retirement in 2014. I don't know why he calls it retirement. I guess he means retirement from the DEA because he hadn't let up a lick. He currently works for the software company Penlink Limited as the executive director, government relations, and stays very, very close to law enforcement, hand in hand, every day. So all the information that we're going to hear from Derek is up to the minute because he works with them so closely. I have tremendous respect for both of these gentlemen. So Tim, Derek, thank you both for being here. Thanks so much, Dr. Phil. Derek, let me start with you since I talked about you last. Uh, How long were you with the DEA? I was 28 years, Dr. Phil. And this company that you're working with now, you're still in law enforcement. You're just working from the outside in, right? Yeah, I mean, I believe in the national security and public safety of America, so I'm very passionate about it. My brother died in Afghanistan in the war, 2003. And so we'll do anything to support law enforcement. But honestly, right now, my focus is supporting all the families that have been devastated from this fentanyl crisis. Well, let's talk about that. This is a crisis. And I don't think I overstated it when I said this is perhaps the most urgently relevant podcast I've done since I started this because we have kids, young adults, teenagers that are dying as we speak because they are buying counterfeit pills laced with fentanyl. They think they're buying one thing, but they're buying something else. True? Right. So, and it's not just the pills that are killing right now, Dr. Phil, it's fentanyl mixed in with cocaine, 
fentanyl mi mixed in with methamphetamine, fentanyl even mixed in with marijuana. There are some cases in America with fatalities. But what we really have is 275 to 300 a day in America are dying from drugs. The CDC most recent statistics in a 12 month period ending June of 2021 reveal 101,263 dead Americans from drugs. It's also now the leading cause of death for all Americans aged 18 to 45. But we are seeing many kids as 12 years old dying, 13, 14, 15. When you say it's a leading cause, specifically, what are you saying is the leading cause? Fentanyl poisoning. Okay. They call it fentanyl overdoses, but I call it poisoning because that's what it is. Uh, more prevalent than COVID deaths, car accidents, and even suicide. Okay, so we're not talking about just drug use. We're talking about fentanyl poisoning in the drugs that are being purchased. Right. A great example, Dr. Phil, is some 14-year-old sees his mother taking Xanax, has no idea what it is, goes online, and it says it's for anxiety and depression. So that person then wants to get some Xanax. They'll take a pill from mom's pill bottle, feel great, feel really good, take another pill. But then when the supplies out, we'll go to Snapchat, go to social media, try to buy one. But unfortunately, the fake pills that are being sold on the internet are coming from Mexican cartel labs, and they're making fentanyl laced pills, and they're making all types of different products with fentanyl, which is killing Americans at record levels, as they have a lethal relationship with the Chinese transnational criminals as well. Well, we're going to talk about that some more in a minute, including the drug laundering. But Tim, he says they're going online and buying this. Now, you're CEO and co-founder of the health and technology company S3 Research, and this was created to identify illicit drug dealers online. What does that mean? You've got stakeholders like Google, YouTube, Snapchat, because you're trying to find and ferret out these people that are selling these drugs online. So how are they doing that? How is this working, Tim? First, uh, a little bit of background on the company. Uh, it was actually started by a, a federal grant from the government. So the U.S. taxpayer is supporting the development of this crucial public technology that focuses on a need that a lot of technology companies aren't meeting, and that is removing uh, illicit drug dealers on their platforms. And so the problem is, is that these drug dealers are across all the platforms, across all parts of the Internet, including uh, Internet search engines, social media and the dark web. And in order to understand their tactics and their marketing approaches and how they entice people to buy their products, you really have to have a landscape view of what's going on. So they're very aggressive in marketing. They're just like any other marketer. Uh, they use hashtags. They use, uh, you know, very uh, descriptive images of what they're trying to sell. They uh, target certain users on these platforms because they're talking about substance use disorder or they're talking about other things. And they are very much uh, socially active, reaching out to people, trying to get them to buy the products. You say that we've seen a volume of around 80 to 90,000 dealers on social media over the past two years across different media platforms? Yeah, and we see even more as we look into new platforms, such as uh, Discord and Telegram that are more encrypted and private. Uh, that number just keeps going up, and that could include people who are active drug dealers who are posting messages. It could be comments to other users trying to get them to buy drugs, and it could be uh, other types of advertising material. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's, the scope is really, uh, really, really uh, hard to grasp. Well, let's look at this. Item 35, which is a drug advertisement that was found on social media, this says, I got weed, LSD, Adderall, Oxy, Roxy, Xanax, Hydro, fentanyl, heroin, meth. It just goes on and on. And then it's got pictures on the side. I mean, this is not subtle. I'm sorry, but I don't know how in the hell do they get by with this? Yeah, so what I would say is uh, a lot of these images are the ones detected by our system, which uses essentially big data and machine learning to detect uh, content that relates to illicit drug selling. And it's not that hard to do, unfortunately. Uh, we have a large scale of data that we look at, but the drug dealers are relatively obvious about what they're doing. 
Some of them are so obvious because they, there's competition in the marketplace. There's probably a, a group of drug dealers who want to really be active in their marketing. And then there's others that are more clandestine in the way that they approach uh, consumers online. So there's many different marketing tactics. This is just one example. And a lot of times we see posts like this and they're never taken down. When you say they're never taken down, Derek, your point is that they might buy any of 10 different things on this list and they're not getting what they think they're getting because a lot of these may be laced with fentanyl and they don't know that when they buy it. Right. I mean, because that's why the young kids, they're trying to get these pills, Oxycontin, Adderall, Percocet, Xanax. They think they're buying what mom had in her pill bottle, but they're actually buying fake pills that are coming from these labs in Mexico controlled by the cartels. And that's why we're seeing so many younger kids dying because they're being deceived. They're not overdosing. They're, they're being deceived. Well, let's look at item 36, what you're talking about here, because we look at this, you see on top, there's authentic oxycodone and down below is the counterfeit oxycodone. And they look very much the same. They're the same color. They've got the same markings on it. They've got the same dosage indicators on it. They've got all of this. So how hard is it to make a counterfeit pill? Well, I've never made one, Dr. Phil, but you could buy this equipment online. You can go to the dark web, the internet. There's plenty of sites. You buy the pill press, which maybe costs $500, $1,000, depending on the size of the pill press. You buy the dyes, you buy the tabloiding designs, you buy the lubricants, and you just pour the powder that you just got in from Mexico or online. You pour it into the machine, it cranks out the pills. You may have a machine on your desktop that could crank out up to 10,000 pills an hour. The pills sell, Dr. Phil, for $40 a pill. So a drug dealer that makes you know 10,000 pills an hour times $40 a pill it's very lucrative. So it's very enticing for these kids out there that are working with the drug cartels to start making these pills themselves. So it's not just getting pills from Mexico directly because they're making mass amounts of, of pills in Mexico. Like as an example, on October 28th, the Mexican army hit a lab in Mexico, in Sinaloa, Mexico, that had 70, the capability of producing 70 million pills a month of these fake blue Oxycontin pills. So it's extremely- Whoa, 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 hold on. How many? Okay, so they, they hit, the Mexican army hit a lab in Sinaloa, Mexico, October 28, 2021. In the lab, they found a couple hundred pounds of fentanyl, but the reporting that came out by AP disclosed that that lab was producing 70 million pills a month. 70 million a month. And there is industrial pill presses that can pump out a million and a half, two million of pills in, a, I think, an hour. Don't quote me on that because I'm not in that business. But these pill presses are very, very high tech, and they can, they can pump out a lot of pills every hour, Dr. Phil. Wow. So we're talking about billions of dollars here of what they can crank out. And if you've got... 20, 30 pounds of fentanyl that you find, how many people can that kill? One kilogram, which is 2.2 pounds, can kill 500,000 Americans potentially. Like I showed the other day, I always use this analogy. You have a sweet in a packet. It's one gram. One gram of fentanyl can kill 500 people. That's small quantity. It only takes like four grains of salt from a salt shaker the equivalent in fentanyl will kill an adult. Okay. And this is what you showed the other day. You take a packet and empty it out. This much can kill how many people? 500 people based on the analysis of two milligrams of fentanyl can kill an adult or anyone for that matter. 500 people out of an equivalent of a sweetener package. Now, why would, and I assist from either one of you, Tim or Derek, either one, why would drug dealers put fentanyl in the pills? I know the answer to this. I just want you guys to explain it because they obviously don't want their customer to die. 
Right. But they also don't care if their customer dies when the business is booming. They care about making billions of dollars, which they are doing right now. Business couldn't be any better for the Mexican cartels. They, they have a huge demand in America. The product is very addictive. It's not plant based. So they can they can you know make it very quickly, very easily. They have a steady flow of precursor chemicals coming from China and other countries in Asia. And so business is booming. And if they lose 20 percent of their customers because they died, it's just the cost of business. When they lose a load of cocaine or methamphetamine in the tractor trailer, they don't stop business because they they lost the load. It's just the, it's just the loss in the business, Dr. Phil. So it's all about making money. That's their motive. They don't care about American lives. That's that's the point. The point is, it's highly addictive. So yes. if they can get it in there at a non-lethal dose and get the person addicted, then yes. they come back more and more and more. Hundred yeah. percent. I would I would add that uh, in the counterfeit business, uh, there's a lot of counterfeiting of medicines. But when it comes to drugs that are uh, subject to substance use disorder, you do have to have a an effect where the person, you know gets what they want. And so that's why fentanyl is being cut into these products because it is addictive, um, but it's much cheaper. Uh, we see the same with other counterfeit medicines. Uh, one example, a crude example is counterfeit Viagra, where you know if it works. Um, and so some counterfeiters put additional excipients in there and additional ingredients to give a, a bigger impact. So a lot of counterfeits are different. We actually had a counterfeit incident here in the United States about almost 10 years ago of counterfeit can cancer drugs in the U.S. marketplace. And we don't know how many patients died from that, but that was cornstarch because you really can't tell if a, if a cancer drug's working or not. Yeah. When you say a drug that's counterfeit and they're making these, this is not something that's regulated like the FDA, for example, that comes in and monitors and regulates. So you have no idea what kind of precision they're using, even if you accept that they're going to put fentanyl in there for addictive purposes or to get that extra kick or extra high or, or whatever, there's no regulation with what precision they're putting it in. So you don't know. They may intend to put in X and put in 10X. It's not controlled, right? So, right. You don't have chemists sitting there and you're not measuring out the quantities they're just trying to make as much money as they can in these cartels, uh, the two main cartels in Mexico, the Sinaloa cartel and the cartel Jalisco new generation. It's all about the money and they don't have that precision. I think over time, my opinion is, is they're going to develop some, you know, more effective ways of measuring this way. They're not killing off as many of the customers because it means less money if customers die. But right now it's just kind of like a free for all. And there's so much of this stuff in the streets in America. Dr. Phil, I want to give you a good example because this is one that resonates. In DEA Phoenix, Arizona, in 2015, they seized zero fake pills in their cases. Last year, over 10 million. The DEA lab has determined that 40% of the pills that they analyzed have a potentially lethal dose of fentanyl. Wow. 40%. Now, parents, listen, that's why I said this is urgently relevant. You just heard Derek Maltz say that millions of pills are being seized that are counterfeit, and as much as 40% of them have a potentially lethal dose of fentanyl in them. So your kids, your teenagers, your 12-year-old, whoever has access to these social media platforms can be back there and say, okay, look, I'm not a drug addict, but... I think I want to try this out. I want to see, you know, what the deal is. Or we're going to have a sleepover. Let's get a pill. Let's see what happens. And maybe they get one pill and they break it up into parts and pieces and share it among three or four of them. And every one of them can drop dead. And if you think, well, now you're being dramatic, Dr. Phil. They're going to get one oxycodone counterfeit pill and four of them drop dead. Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. It happened just recently in Long Beach with some comedians, and it wasn't even counterfeit pills. It had to do with cocaine and marijuana. We just had a group of parents on our show with kids that were not drug addicts. They ordered exactly that, one pill, 
one young lady took a quarter of a capsule and was dead. A quarter of a capsule. So if you think we're being dramatic about this, we are not. Fentanyl is 50 to 100 times stronger than morphine. And I don't even want to talk about carfentanil yet. We'll get to that in a minute. But fentanyl is 50 to 100 times stronger than morphine, and it's being mixed into these drugs. And 40% of the pills have potentially lethal doses in them. Now, Tim, talk about item number 38, which is on your screen, because I want parents to be able to see what is coming up on their kids' screens, phones, or whatever. These are just some of the emojis, drug codes that I want to decode. This is what they use to signal they're dealing. This is what they have. This is what they're selling. These are some of the more common ones, correct? Correct. And uh, we have uh, channels that we look at where they actually list the uh, emojis that they use like a menu. And so uh, you can see what the menu of drugs are and how those code words work. This is to evade some of the detection techniques that different platforms use. There are a lot of use of hashtags and slang terms as well. And as you saw in the last uh, picture that we saw, uh, a lot of obfuscation by trying to change the name of a drug um, with characters and other types of symbols. And then you'd see things that are so obvious, like a drug dealer providing a QR code so that you can scan it on your mobile phone and get access to their menu of drugs on uh, something like another platform. So there are very clandestine ways of, of communicating this information, but there are very open ways as well. And what we're seeing more and more is how interactive and easy it is to access this information compared to what we're seeing maybe five years ago. And for those of you that are just listening to this and not watching, we're showing emojis that you can find on our website so you can see what they are. I'm putting up right now a menu. That's the menu that you were referring to, Tim. Very colorful. So it's eye-catching. And it's just got a straight menu, just like you would order lunch in a diner, just going right down what you can order. It's got a list of the drugs down there. And then it's interesting. It says L.A. County Delivery, Nationwide Shipping. and Derek, let me ask you about this delivery thing. You order this and they deliver it to your house? Well, if you listen to the story of Matt Capilouto and every family out there that's losing their kids, I mean, once they order it, the drug dealer will just deliver it right to the house. That's exactly what happened with Alex Capilouto. And so, yeah, it's, it's just the way they do the business. They feel very comfortable and it's happening every day all around America. But Dr. Phil, just so you know, the cartels themselves are not using these sites like for retail distribution. They're making the powder in Mexico. They're making the pills in Mexico. They're selling them to the, to the people here in America. And then they have the, the distribution business on the streets of this country so they can make money as well. So there's multiple levels. Tim, when you guys find these drug dealers and we have situations where there has been a death. Does S3 Research cooperate with law enforcement to identify who the dealer is and help with the prosecution? Because I know, because I've worked with some of the families, that these folks are, some of them are being prosecuted for murder. Yeah, so I can't unfortunately get into the specifics of our interactions with law enforcement because of various reasons, it could be ongoing investigations, et cetera. But our uh, data that we generate is used by different technology platforms and by certain regulators and certain other non-technology companies. So the point is not only to prosecute individuals, which I think is important, especially in the context of all the victims we've seen, but also to understand kind of the supply chain flows, understanding where all of this precursor is coming from, such as Chinese e-commerce sites and other sites as well and then understanding who are the targets that we should be going after that are kind of the bigger fish. Uh, because we have some that are very active, some that have a lot of transaction information going on, and then we may have those who are still in the business but may be less of a threat just because of the volume of activity they're generating. 
But unfortunately, all of these drug dealers should be removed from these platforms. It's just there's so many, there's so much data that it's really hard because we have to prioritize, uh, you know, kind of our enforcement efforts. And a dealer can just change their screen name and pop up somewhere else, right? Yeah, I think the unfortunate part is, is if you're a drug dealer, a lot of times the worst thing that can happen to you is your account gets removed and you just create a new one. And you may even use the same phone number. You may use the same encrypted communication account name. So you're not really losing access to your customers. So there's very little repercussion for a lot of these digital drug dealers because there's just simply not enough resources put to bear across this public health issue. And we don't have universal um, agreement on what we should do. Like all the tech platforms could just say, we're not going to tolerate this in any way. We're going to put as many resources as we can to remove all this content. And we're going to work very proactively with regulators to do that and law enforcement. That's not the case today. And I'm not sure we're going to get there in the next few years, but I hope we are. Okay. So how many kids are going to be dead in the next two or three years if it doesn't happen is my question. And Derek, you can speak to this, I'm sure, but we're not talking about a handful of pills get to LA, a handful of pills get to Omaha, a handful of pills get to Oklahoma City. How much is coming into the country? Okay. So a couple of things. On the border, CBP does a great job. I highly recommend that you and your staff look at the CBP statistics. Last year, they seized 11,201 pounds of fentanyl. That's a 390% increase since 2018. The DEA administrator had a press conference in December. She reported that the DEA alone, working with their partners, seized 20,400 fake pills on the streets of America and 15,000 pounds of fentanyl. So we already talked about that one kilogram, 2.2 pounds, can kill 500,000. She reported, the administrator of DEA, that the DEA seized enough fentanyl already to kill everyone in America. And that was as of December of 2021. And I've talked to the bosses in DEA and the, and the statistics are escalating. It's escalating, not going down. And we see that on item 37. Again, for those of you listening, not watching, I'll put this on the website. But this talks about DEA drug and weapon seizures. It says 20,400,000 pills, 15,000 pounds of fentanyl. I mean, it goes on and on. And this is coming across the border out of Mexico. It's coming from the Mexican cartels. Yes, what's happening, Dr. Phil, is the Chinese transnational criminals are sending massive ton quantities of the key precursor chemicals. The cartels have lab operations throughout their country. They make the powder, they make the pills, and then they use their existing cartel infrastructure to send all these drugs, these deadly drugs, into our country. That's one of the reasons I call it a weapon of mass destruction attack or a chemical weapon attack, because they are chemicals. They're coming from labs in China and they're killing our kids at record levels. We've never had a terrorist organization that I'm aware of in this country that has killed 100,000 Americans in a year. Yeah, that's hard to wrap your head around. Now, I'm not a big conspiracy theorist, but this starts to get me thinking <laughs> about this. This is all coming out of China going into Mexico and then flowing into America, what percentage do you estimate has been seized? If there's been 20,400,000 counterfeit pills, what percentage of the total universe of counterfeit pills do you think that constitutes? So Dr. Phil, as an agent, brand new agent, and even till I retired, they always estimated that about 10% is seized. That's from the experts. That's not my expertise, you know, as far as statistics on reporting, but that's what we all have said over the years. So if you do the math, that means there's hundreds of millions of pills in our country already. Hundreds of millions of pills and 150, 200,000 pounds of fentanyl that have made it into the country if 10% have been seized. And that's why I'm saying to the parents, and, and by the way, all of you listeners and viewers, I ask Tim and Derek to urgently get back with me on this, and 
I scheduled with them today to do this today because I didn't want the sun to set again before we got to you with all of this information, because what I'm hoping is that you will call your kids in, and if they don't live at home, if they're at college, wherever, but call them in, make eye contact, and say, hey, you may not know this, but let me tell you something. There are millions and millions of pills There are tons and tons of cocaine and marijuana and meth that is laced with a deadly poison that is flowing into America in increasing levels. And if you get a hold of it, you are going to be brain damaged at best and dead at worst. And this isn't happening to people you read about on the internet or in the newspaper. It's happening to more and more people. It is the number one cause of death among 18 to 45, fentanyl death. It is the number one cause. So this is something that has jumped up and reared its ugly head. And why are people not talking about this more? So, Dr. Phil, I will tell you this. Unfortunately, I came up with a saying recently that This is not a red or a blue issue. It's a red, white, and blue issue. Unfortunately, everything today is driven by politics. It doesn't matter what side of the aisle you you stand. It matters that the kids are dying at record levels. So you would hope that the politicians would start realizing this should be a bipartisan issue. We can argue about politics later. But when it comes to the kids and our future generation, we have to put the politics aside. Unfortunately, The southwest border is a very political topic right now, as you know, we all know. And China is a very political topic. So nobody in the Beltway, the politicians, unless they want to try to make a political point, they don't want to really talk about this. So this has got to stop because we have to save lives. If you look at the San Diego report back last year, the end of last year, there's a 1,300 percent increase in fentanyl-related deaths from 2016 through 2020. San Diego reported that, and and, um, and uh, the, the Sheriff's Department in Orange County, they reported a 1,067% increase. That's just a couple. Uh, the, the morgue in uh, the corner in Ohio, Franklin County, Ohio, she reported 86% of the deaths that she's seeing are fentanyl-related on the drug side. And that was only through the third quarter of 2020. The statistics are far behind. We're not doing public service announcements. We have to be more aggressive educating the kids. And of course, we got to treat the people that are already addicted out there, the millions of people that are addicted. So it's a complex problem. People in Washington, Dr. Phil, run away from the controversy. They're not embracing it and they need to start doing it. And this is across both sides. It's not one way or another. Like I said, it's a red, white, and blue issue, and America has to wake up and demand accountability. Yeah. You know, you said something else the other day that really stuck with me. You said kids today are supposed to learn from their mistakes, not die from them. Exactly. I thought that was really an important statement. We all made mistakes as kids, every one of us, right? You look back, but you're not supposed to die from mistakes. You heard the stories, these poor families. I hear them every day. And these kids, they don't know what they're doing. We're in a very, very, you know, interesting time in America. You have the COVID, you have social isolation, you have businesses closed, you have depression. And so people are turning to these dangerous drugs. They don't even realize how dangerous they are. And they're not waking up. And then the parents are all saying, we never got a chance to be warned. How come I wasn't warned about this fentanyl? One of the concerns I have, especially when you hear from these families, is that they really had to work hard to show law enforcement that their kids bought stuff online. So we really don't know the true scope and scale of of this epidemic and its relation to a lot of these technology platforms. It could be much worse. Uh, Unfortunately, a lot of these families had to go into their kids' phones and find out after these tragedies, what had happened, and they had to become investigators and advocates on their, uh, for their kids' own behalf. And I think that really needs to change because we could have a silent epidemic going on out there 
that, and we're not going to address the issue until we have better information about, uh, you know, how these platforms are facilitating this activity and how we can stop it. Well, I think that's exactly right. And in law enforcement's defense, and I think it's why companies like S3 Research is so important to bridge this gap, is the police get called out and they're standing there and, okay, here's a teenager that's lost their life and there's a pill. Well, they've got to have some kind of chain of custody of that pill, they got to say, okay, you say they ordered it on the internet. We got to trace that some way. We have to know. And you're identifying these people and coming up with ways that they can be identified and give them a roadmap to that, which I think is so important. But I've been talking about this for probably a couple of years. I have to admit, I have not done my job because I haven't been talking about it loud enough. I haven't been talking about it long enough. I haven't been talking about it with enough urgency until you two really educated me to the scope of this issue here. Derek, when you say 1,300% increase in San Diego, and a thousand sixty seven percent increase in Orange County from the sheriff, eighty six percent of the deaths in Ohio in drug related category, all having to do with fentanyl. And every parent you guys heard when we were talking to these parents that are so tragically heartbroken, they were stunned. They were shocked. They said, "What? Fentanyl, what?" My kid's not a druggie, and here they ordered a pill, which they shouldn't have done. Every one of them said, I admit, that that was not the smart thing for the kid to do, but they had not had a conversation with their child about fentanyl. They had not had the discussion we're having right now about fentanyl, the discussion that I'm saying, I want every parent that's listening to this and every parent that they call to say, listen to this, to sit down with their child and say, listen. You're buying these from unscrupulous people. They're putting it in there to addict you. It's not regulated. They don't know how much they're putting in there, and they just consider death as breakage. People are dying to the point that it's the number one cause of death. It's like playing Russian roulette, but there's a bullet in every other chamber. You just can't do this. They've got to have that conversation with their kids. And I want them to know these statistics. If what Derek just said is that the rule of thumb is 10% are seizures, my God, there is enough out there to kill every American walking the streets today. We've got to alert people to say you can't take this risk. Dr. Phil, can I just tell you one other stat which is interesting is that in Phoenix, on one day on December, I think, 14th, they seized 1.7 million fake pills. One day. Unbelievable. And uh, I would just add that uh, this is the power of a lot of these platforms is they have a huge voice and a huge reach in their communities uh, with young adults and children, et cetera. So they have the power to broadcast this message to their users and say, please be careful about buying any drugs online. And by the way, we're going to remove all of this content. So they have the power to do two very important things, to get rid of it completely with no you know, no, no if, ands, or buts, but just get rid of it. But also uh, say exactly what you said, Dr. Phil, to their millions of users and make sure that they understand the risks on their platform. You know, it's so hard when you talk about young people, they hear all of this, don't do drugs, don't do drugs, don't do drugs. We're not even saying that. And I do say that. I do say you shouldn't be doing heroin. You shouldn't be doing cocaine. You shouldn't be doing all of this. But put that aside for a minute. I'm saying now this isn't just talking about a bad habit. We're talking about your life. And we're not talking about don't get addicted to heroin and you're going to wind up with your life falling apart and in three months, six months, a year, you may wind up overdosing and dying. What we're telling you here is 
You can take one quarter of a counterfeit pill. You can snort one line of cocaine and drop dead right now because of this fentanyl. You are a complete idiot if you are buying these drugs like this with what's happening right now. You are a complete idiot if you do it. And we have to absolutely get that message across. And we've got to figure out how to do that. You know, right now, seizures in DEA in 2021, they've reported 90 cases of online drug cases, and 49 of those have a direct tie to fatalities. Where have we ever seen this kind of numbers jumping up? Snapchat's the highest with 34 cases, and Facebook Messenger with 28. And as I said, I'm not trying to throw these social media platforms under the bus. They don't want this. Hell, Snapchat doesn't want this. Facebook, they don't want this. This is terrible for their business, right? Yeah, I think that um, first, a lot of these platforms weren't designed to do this type of activity, but unfortunately, this is what has happened. And there's a lot of things they're dealing with, whether it be COVID misinformation, whether it be these drug sales, and they, it's not in their interests to have their users die. It's in their interest to keep, create healthy ecosystems where people can have enriched social benefit uh, from their digital communities. And they don't want this, but they're been too slow to react and be proactive about understanding what their responsibilities are to keep the public safe. And this is part of a broader conversation, but I think it's something that will be advanced because of these tragedies, and we really need to address it urgently. Yeah, and that's a high price to pay to advance the conversation. As you know, we talked to those parents the other day, and they were just absolutely heartbroken. I mean, can you just imagine? And every one of those kids, they were good students, good athletes. These were not kids that you would expect to be walking in their room and finding them dead. And I'm not saying they should have ordered the pill. They shouldn't have done that. No question about it. But these are not who you would say, well, you do drugs 200 times a year. Odds are against you. We're talking about one time, two times, something like that. And the odds are just against them. You know, Derek, what are the police doing about this? Well, the police are doing tremendous work considering the resources that they have. Like I already reported some of the seizures in the DEA and CBP and Homeland Security investigations. They're actually working as an example with state and locals. They're recovering the phones of the deceased. They're using court orders to get onto some of the phones of the bad guys. They're ingesting the information. They're analyzing the information. They're developing evidence. They're going to the prosecutors, both state and local and federally, and they're trying to get, you know, indictments on these drug traffickers, and they're trying to charge them with murder. And it's very complicated to do. It's uh, the laws are antiquated. Uh, there, there's a lot of issues with these cases, but we've had some successful prosecutions. You heard about Matt Capaluto's daughter. I helped him get on some media, uh, the two year anniversary of his daughter's uh, death. A couple of days before the DEA and Homeland Security investigations and Riverside County, California, they arrested the subject who sold Alex the, the pill. So law enforcement is working hard. The, the, just the seizures alone, Dr. Phil, if you take 40 percent of the DEA's 20 million pills, then DEA alone potentially saved do the math. What, five million, whatever that is? Now that's eight million lives if those pills had fatal levels of fentanyl in them. And that's what the estimate exactly. is. That's eight million lives. Exactly. And when you asked the question to Tim before, I want to give you a simple illustration about these companies, because I don't believe the corporate executives of these multi-billion dollar companies want to see this kind of stuff being sold. But I bought this one on Amazon after the parents were raising hell about it. Keep calm and let fentanyl handle it. Yeah, I bought it myself because I didn't believe it. So I ordered one and got it shipped to my house. Yeah, unbelievable. Talk about uh, Matt Capaluto's situation. Where are they right now with that prosecution? Well, the, the arrest was made in December. So it's early phases, obviously, the prosecution. It's going to take a while. 
I don't ask for details. My friends in the DEA in Los Angeles are very aggressive. They have a cyber team. They're working really hard. They're going to make a lot of arrests this upcoming year, and they're going to charge people with the death of these young kids uh, because that's one of the, 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 the success measures is if we could keep these deaths down and see a reduction. Uh, the DEA, Homeland Security Investigations, are going to continue to work very hard to prosecute these guys. But, you know, like Tim said, there is a resource issue and there's a training issue. There's a technology issue. The government agents do not have the training. They don't have the resources. They don't have the technology that's needed to do these complex cases. And another thing, Dr. Phil, that we didn't talk about, which is relevant, is our laws are very antiquated. Like, for example, with using encrypted communication apps to do not only criminal activity, but terrorist activity. We are restricted in America on what we can do, even with a judge's signature on a court order. We can't get content on communications of these things sometimes, which pre prevents law enforcement from developing the critical evidence that's, that's needed to prosecute them. So Congress has to wake up a little bit and start helping you know, update the laws. No one, no one in law enforcement is looking to invade the privacy of, of our citizens but they want to stay in the game and they want to save lives. That's what they get paid to do. And it is hard because of that. And yes. In this case that we're referring to, Alex was 20 years old and purchased a pill. And it is believed that she took one half of what she believed to be oxycodone. And on analysis after the fact, it was pure fentanyl. And it was originally ruled a drug overdose, non-criminal. And after so much hard work by the parents with the police, going back through the phone, tracing it back, then it was changed. So now the charge to the drug dealer is murder. And there is a trial pending. I think it's coming up. The trial date is set in May of this year. So there is accountability for some of this, but it took two years to get to the point of making an arrest and getting to trial. And there are, you said, 90,000, 80, 90,000 of these across different platforms. That's one took two years to get to trial. Well, there's 89,999 more of them out there, and it took two years to get one of them to trial. So Something has to change. You know, Matt thinks his daughter was deceived to death and that she was sold poison. And you know, there's no other way to look at it as far as I'm concerned. So, you know, we'll see. But Matt and Christine feel really strongly about it, and so they're going to follow up on it. And we'll keep everybody posted on that. Tim, is there anything that we haven't talked about here that we should yeah, the one thing that I think is really important is that unless the whole of tech industry addresses this issue collectively, we're really not going to address the problem at all. If we uh, take down drug dealers on one site, but then they just migrate to another, or if they are able to coordinate across different platforms, across the different internet ecosystems, then people will still be unfortunately dying. So we need a really whole of internet approach to this issue because it's so complex there's so many points of vulnerability, and um, we don't have that right now. Whether that comes through legislation or other forms of, you know, making companies do what they're supposed to do, what they should be doing anyway, that's a separate question. But that's what we need. We need a really whole of ecosystem approach. Yeah, and there are some pieces of legislation that are being pushed along, but they're moving slowly, and you know, it's our tax dollars at work. This moves slowly, and. I'm not sure that speed necessarily moves the ball down the field because you got to have the right law. It's so easy if you race up there and get something, the wrong thing in place, the drug dealers and the cartels are just going to find a way to do an end run around it. We got to get something that's comprehensive and really shuts it down, right? Correct. And we already have laws on the books like the Ryan Hyde Act, who's named after Ryan Height, who died from buying Vicodin online almost 20 years ago. So it's not like we haven't known that this problem has existed. We haven't enforced the laws that we have, and we haven't 
made sure that a lot of the platforms do what they're supposed to do, what's already in their content and moderation policies, but put resources behind it. I think that's another clear uh, signal that people are taking this seriously. Put the resources, people, and money behind this issue to take down this content and make sure you prevent further deaths. And not to digress from the urgency of the fentanyl situation, but I do want to say in talking about just buying these drugs online, generally speaking, as Derek was talking about earlier, it's not just these drugs that are laced with fentanyl, but buying cancer drugs or other kinds of drugs, if you're not buying them from someone that is reputable, FDA regulated and approved, you have no idea what you're getting. We're seeing it now with organized crimes involvement in retail shoplifting. They go in and steal a lot of these things that are used for pain management, that sort of thing. And then it's stored in warehouses or trailers where it gets to 130 or 140 degrees Fahrenheit inside that metal box and it deactivates the ingredients and people buy it for 25, 30 cents on the dollar thinking they're getting a great deal. They're not getting anything. The same thing can happen with medication. You just got to know who you're buying from and what you're getting because if you're taking counterfeit medication, and all the while your disease is advancing, it can absolutely cost you your life. So it's so important that you know who you're getting your medications from, that in fact you're getting what you think you're getting. In the case of fentanyl, it can cost you your life. In the case of these other drugs, it can slowly cost you your life if you think you're treating a disease that you're not and allowing it to advance. So there's just danger across the board with this. But with fentanyl, it is a right now danger, and we need parents to talk to their kids. And I've got a lot of young people that listen to this as well. And if you're listening, don't be an idiot. I mean, love yourself enough to treat yourself kindly. Treat yourself in a way that you value yourself, you value your body, you value your life, and don't put yourself in harm's way with something where the deck is stacked against you. As Derek said, you're supposed to learn from your mistakes, not die from them. And we don't want that happening to you here. Derek, what have we not talked about that we should? Well, I want to just pick up on what uh, Tim said. It's not just a whole of technology approach, which I agree with everything he said. It's a whole of the United States approach, because in the law enforcement world, if we have law enforcement working in their own silos, as an example, and I ran this coordination center for 10 years, so I know about that very well, and information sharing, we have to focus on the threats. And for law enforcement now, the threat is really clear. The Mexican cartels and the Chinese transnational criminals. You want to shut down the flow of the chemicals. You want to shut down the production labs. You want to shut down the money flows. And you want to put them out of business so they can't produce the poison that's killing our kids. So you also need the medical professionals, the substance use disorder professionals, the mental illness professionals. It's that complicated and it's, it's that important that we need a task force, not just throwing money at a task force, but accountability for results. Who's in charge and are we seeing a drop in the deaths? Are we educating the kids? Are we doing public service announcements with the Super Bowl as an example, right? Are we, are we recruiting professional athletes and celebrities? And thank you, Dr. Phil, because what you're doing today means so much to not only me, but the families around America, because no one else at your level in the national spotlight is doing this. So thank you. I mean that from the bottom of my heart and your staff was tremendous. Um, but this is the kind of stuff we need to continue to do because we will save lives. And the parents know it. Well, thank you for saying that. But this is my responsibility. I need to be a good steward of this platform. I've been afforded this platform for 20 years. And it is my responsibility to be doing this. And I'm sorry that I have not yelled louder and longer before, but I am going to make up for that now. I pledge to you, Derek, and to you, Tim, my platform is y'all's platform. 
whatever you need, whenever you need it. If there's something we need, a call to action, if there's legislation we need to push, if there are PSAs we need to do, I'll produce them. I'll be in them. I'll produce them for other people. I'll do whatever. You guys let me know what we need and when we need it. And we'll be the three musketeers on this and we'll raise hell till we get things moving the way they need to move. Really appreciate that. That means a lot. Thank you. Thanks so much. Yeah. We need so much advocacy on this issue. Very much appreciate it. Well, if we need to start recruiting, I know a lot of athletes. I know a lot of celebrities and whatever voices we need, I'll get a chorus you wouldn't believe. Yeah, we had one We had one kid, uh, Jack Driscoll, Philadelphia Eagles, his friend, high school teammate up Joseph Dean in Connecticut, died of fentanyl at 23. So Jack, he did a Nike commercial, My Cleats, My Cause, and he talked about fentanyl. But other than that, I haven't seen it. So we need NBA, Major League Baseball, hockey, NFL, any of those professional athletes, if they talk about fentanyl and the, you know, the deadly aspects of fentanyl, that's going to mean a lot, and celebrities as well. Well, I've got friends and contacts in every category you just named, and you better believe I'm going to call in the chips. Good I'm man. I'm going to call them and get them in front of the camera, <laughs> and we're going to raise hell. And I also have a long-term relationship with CBS, and I'm going to start there. Good man. If you ever need any details, any statistics, any facts, any connections in law enforcement, please let me know. Well, you guys are the ones with the facts. So, you know, we don't want to just throw a bunch of numbers at people, but both of you have some staggering statistics. And this when you're walking by the TV and you go, wait a minute, what? (laughs) What did they just say? I'm sorry that those numbers are true, but they are. And that's where we need to get it. So I'm going to let both of you go again. Thank you for stopping and bending your day around doing this. You see why I wanted to do it so urgently. I want to get this out there and we'll get this turned around quickly. I'm going to promote it on all of my platforms and on the show, and I'm sure we'll be talking again. Let's really follow through on this and make some noise, guys. Thank you very much for spending this time on Fill in the Blanks, and thank you for being on the show the other day. We will continue this dialogue. And if we need to go to Capitol Hill, we'll load up and go to Capitol Hill. Absolutely. Thank you. Derek, thank you. Tim, thank you. So long. Take care. Thanks. All right.